everyone, welcome to another Average Angler video. It's uh, Monday, I don't normally get to come out fishing on a Monday, but the situation has arisen where I can come out on a Monday and Tony Rickson happens to be running an open here at Acorn. So I was here Saturday in a previous video where I won my section and so today I'm here on Tony's Open. Not so many turned up on Tony's Open, it's not a lot of people seem to be able to get out on a Monday around here. We've got one, two, three, four, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it's eleven anglers, that's a bit of a knock up really. I've drawn peg thirteen, which makes a change from being on a bridge. Um, I'm ready nice and early, so I thought I'd do a little video. From the back of the peg, a bit different. I see I'm ready early because the net's not even in yet, and you know you can't put your nets into 15 minutes before, so we've still got more than 15 minutes. What baits have we bought with us today? We bought the other fateful maggot and pinky. I've been bringing pinky to every match for the last six weeks just because pinkies last so long when you buy a pint of pinkies. If you just keep them in the fridge, they're just, they're just, I don't know, they're like flipping immortal. Expanders, some more expanders, and some one mil. They, they, they look like sloppy ground bait or something from here, but that's just soaking one mil pellets. And then in the emergency backup, I've got a bit of expander um, dark from Tom Thick. Which I'm at, and then you can see hiding in there is the um, worms. Because in this tub, I've got some worms out of my wormery. And that is because I'm toying with the idea of fishing a silver line uh, out here. But what I've, you know, I'm going to start looking for carp and then I'll drop on the silver line in the early. But if, obviously, there's a few guys here that are fishing for the silver's pool. There's only one play out for the silver's, which is first place. You've got to win it. Because there's only a few of us, obviously. So. If I do go on to the silvers, it needs to be really positive, so it's just, I'm just going to attack it with some worms, some casters and a bit of uh, ground bait, and if that doesn't work, then I won't win the silvers, but there's no point trying to catch a pull back up, it'll just fish to more match, and uh, Andy Guard probably will have fished for more match as well, so I'll have to do something a bit more positive and aggressive to try and win that if I decide to do it. But if the car fish is going all right, we won't bother. Right, I'm going to just start getting my nets in now, a few people are putting the nets in, and I will Next time I see you, we'll be fishing, guys. Thank you very much. Right, guys. Just, oops. Just um, potted in a little bit of bait over my silver slime. It's not worms, like I, I did say I was going to chop some worms later on. Blah blah blah. But I haven't done that yet. I'll just put some pellets on it for now, just to hold any fish that might be in the area. And I'll have a look at it. You know, I just had a, I just had a. A desire to do that, I don't know why, something in my head to just put some pellets on it, see what happens, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so, I've plumbed up my far bank tight, and it's pretty, it's a lot deeper than the peg, the peg 31 was yesterday. I'm using the same rig as it, it took me a while to work out how to catch them yesterday. Not yesterday, sorry, um, Saturday. And I started dobbing off the bottom, sort of bait dropping through the water, which has always been successful for me. And it didn't work. I did get a few indications in a few spots. And when I went on the deck, it happened. So, I've started on the deck, tight over. What I've done by plumbing around, I found that pretty much everywhere is the same depth. I just missed a bite there, straight away. So I found that across my edge, until I get to a certain point, which is almost just past where I want to fish on the right hand side anyway. Pretty much the same depth within half an inch or so. Which is what I wanted, because I want to be able to present this very tight to the bottom. I want to cover everything because it's raining. This wasn't forecast, but you know, when there's this much cloud around, you will get a bit of drizzle every now and again, don't you? So. So we're doing the same as we did on the last video, for those who didn't watch the last video. It's just 8 mil punch spread at the minute. Fishing with a little tiny 0.2 gram float, strung out pattern. Um, I don't think it needs to be strung out, and I think I could bulk it if I wanted, but I'm keeping it like that because it's working. It's so shallow, it's down in no time anyway. And if I do, you know, if I pick up one fish on the drop, then that'll be worth having that rig set up like that then I'm just fishing tight up to the bank it's quite deep tight against the bank here over two and a half feet deep tight to the bank on this peg not all the pegs like this at Acorn 
there we are, it's gone straight under again. So there's some fish there. Just another, another bit of that thing. There's a you can down on this straight part of acorn between pegs 11, uh, sorry, pegs 12 and 21. It's like a big long straight. There's quite often a lot of smaller carp up the far bank. Just like this, which is what I expected this to be. I'll probably pick a few of these up, that's fine. I'm pretty sure that's probably what gave me a bite before. So I'll click him as I want, even though there's not one, and when we catch the next one, we'll just won't click it. If we catch another one, then we just won't click it. Again, I've not got my right way on. I've not been, I've not been putting it on the last couple of uh, matches, not because I've got anything against it, but I feel like the way. <laughs> I haven't caught it. You know, it's that time of year where you're not catching enough fish to go over your weight limit anyway, so you just crack on. And I'll just um, see how we go. So that's a good start. Now, first hole I've put it in. I don't know if you're picking up. I don't know if the, um, the tripod cam can actually see the spot where I'm fishing. It's quite, because I'm fishing four, about 14 and a half metres from a pole as far as I can to the left and get tight to the bank and then the idea is to work my way across over the first hour you know I'm not putting any feed in anywhere so I'm not committed to fishing one spot out or anything like that you tend to find these little carp you'll catch two or three in a spot and then they're gone even if you tap in bait in for them they're a bit finicky they're in and out but you can just move when you're not putting bait in so that's my plan Maybe I'll pick up a couple of lumps while I'm doing it. And then after we've been fishing for a bit, we can start working out, looking at how it's fishing everywhere else, whether or not we need to start feeding or drop down the shelf or what's going on. So that was it. I thought I'd wrap the cameras running for the first dobbing because sometimes it can be can be that instant. So thanks for that and I will catch you in a bit. Right guys, it is. So what time it is, I can't see it's too close to me. We're just under half an hour in. I've got six pound on me clicker and I've had probably five fish, maybe six fish. This might be my six or seven fish. Different sizes, mostly the small ones, but I've had a two pounder. So one pound, I've had an F1. This one. Took the bait as it was falling, I think. So the phone never really settled. I've switched to double maggot because uh, the bread kept coming off, kept getting going over, getting really rapid bites, they're always pulled out. I kept going over there, I felt like he was slightly far up that fish. Um, I kept going over there, getting miss bite, miss bite, miss a bite, miss a bite. So I thought, oh, I'll, um, I'll switch to maggot and see what happens. And the float went straight under, so I've stuck with a double maggot. That's the first fish I've lost. Got quite a big hook on. I seem to be putting them off. I'm sticking with it for a bit. I told you it was the curse of the cameras, guys. I turned you up, turned you off. Moved the, moved the rig a few inches to the right, tried another spot. Went straight under. It feels like a good fish. I'm hoping it's a good fish and not a foul up fish. You know, I, haven't, I didn't start very far with that fish, so I don't have any reason to believe that's what's going to happen. Over there. I'm get his head up. So it could be far up. It's got a little bit of a headband to it. So. No, it's properly up. It's just a real nice one. Look at that. Properly up. Just like that. Nicked him on the maggot. He's a good four pound. All day long. Right guys, one and a half hour up there. Just clicked 20 pound on just moved to a new spot. I had to replumb it because the rig didn't sit right and I realised that I was actually just off the bottom and I was catching loads of roach. So I've literally had two inches gone in. Two fish and two pups. I had a big F1 about three pound. Maybe two pound, two and a half pound, and then I've got this little two pound on. His mouth has definitely seen better days, that's rare for acorn, which really normally in quite good condition, I find. Just 
I'm going to click one for him. So I feel like I clicked a little bit too much for the F1 and he's not quite too bad. It's like I wish I put my right way on, although it doesn't, like I said, it's not going to matter that much. I'll, uh, it's not going to matter that much. I will probably just get to about approximately 50 and change the next anyway. December, you know. Christmas is on the horizon. No, it's a very, very small part of being a bit of crap on the line, as I was saying. So there we are. I'm just going to keep doing this. This is, a, you know, nothing's changed really. And uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. Just thought I'd turn you on, but while I'm catching, I might not catch, you know, if the map wears on it, I might all go peat on and, and I've got no footage, so I thought I'd better get some. See you in a bit. Well, it's just over two hours in, guys, and I've just clicked 30 on the last fish. Still doing the same thing. Um, you know, I don't see any point in putting any feeding on doing anything, it just keeps going under, and I'm making little carps instead of running over like little tiny stockies, and then just up this, and it just went thump. And there was some dead weight there and I don't think it's far up because the fish is just coming nice and steady like I've walked it in like you do with these big fish when they're lethargic. So I think there's a good chance he's probably hooked. And uh, he just, uh, maybe he's not I'm really gutted about that. That's another big fish I've lost for you guys. Right, sorry I've lost my tripod cam for this at the moment. I'm going to sort it out in a second. I don't know how long I've lost that for. Um, I've been fishing over, as you know, catching on the maggot. Got a bit hard. Sort of gone all the way along and I think I was a bit reluctant to put any bait in. So I tried with bread and I got loads and loads of indications with bread. But then uh, just fouled up something. Lost it. So I'm just trying with that worm head. Um, yet to this side to find out whether this is fouled up or not. Um, definitely some fish. Still mooching around on that fire bank. This fish is a, is a, is a powerful fish, or it's not coming up easy, so it's either a very big fish or it's foul locked. Maybe it's a very big fish. It's a decent fish. I think it's foul, I think it is foul locked. It's sort of spinning on the way. Okay, another two or three pounds on that one. I'm give myself two for him. So the worm hasn't done anything, it's just it's changed really. Just trying to find a hot bait that the fish want. Let's get the shots back out again. I'll put the magnet on again. I'm gonna try sort this tripod cam out and see what's going on. Hello everyone, it is now five past two, we're fishing until quarter past three I think, so we've got an hour and ten minutes. I've just primed um, a couple on my bottom of the slope swims, I'm going with an expander, Let's see what we can catch, if anything. I'm just going to top up with a couple of pellets in the cup, I'm going to go to my longer one first, to this white pellet, which is, so what, so, Let's just give you a recap because I don't know how much you've caught because my cameras have been playing up. Basically, I've been, sh I've been fishing over against the island all the way across that farm bank. There's been a couple of pot spots. That's how I'm talking to you. There's been a couple of hot spots, but nothing. Um, but I have caught all the way across and I've caught mainly on my gear. I've caught a couple on bread but I found the bread just seems to get knocked about by the, the roach too much. I've tried the bread a couple of times when, when I can't catch on the maggot in it and I couldn't catch on the bread either so I don't believe it's that. Um, just um, Sorry, let me just concentrate on putting this in. Make sure all the pellets have gone down the hole. 
As I was saying, yeah, so I've, I've just really pretty much caught on the maggot mostly. Check the guy out there, he's stuck in the tree lock, he's got his pole up the tree. Famous on the internet, so it's not just me that cocks it up. Right, so, yeah, I fished, this is my first putting down on this one. I put a pinch, pinch of pellet down there in the big cup about 15 minutes ago. And I also put a pinch against the other pallet. Some behind me on my left, or to my left, or it's behind me as I'm sitting here. And um, I'm just looking for lumps, really. Sometimes an hour to go, or sometimes you have to wait till half an hour to go, you can catch in the edges. Just got to work out what depth they're at. Quite often they're at the deeper water, which is where I'm starting. A little indication at the minute. Don't look like a carp bite. Looks like it could be a skimmer or something messing with the pellet. Very subtle movement on the float. I'm going to strike at it in case it's a big fish liner. Not very comfortable here at the moment because uh, can't put my feet on the floor. Need my side foot plates. Yeah, so where was I? Yeah, let's start again. So I've gone over and I've caught on the maggot basin. I've got about 45 to 50 pound, I'd guess. And I haven't fed a drip over there. Just, it's just gone quiet. And a few more, even my hot spots weren't producing, so I've just tapped in. Sort of five or six pellets, gone over it with a pellet, and I've just not had. Um, and there's some fish there, look, look, not very big, and I've, and, I've, and, I've, and I've just not had a fine over it. So it's obviously don't want any bait over there. And so I thought I'd give it a rest and try some of the other lines and see if I can finish strongly down the edges here. This is a roach, a very big roach. Down the edge on the pellet, look at that, would you believe it, an expander, they love expander. Yeah, so, that's what I'm doing, that was my first put on that one. All I've done is put some, a little pinch of micros and some um, six mils down there. Gone over with the biggest expander I've got, eight mil expander. Expecting to catch a proper unit instead. Well, it was a unit, which was a unit of a roach, not a unit of a carp. But I'll take it. I said there was something down there messing about with it, probably a few roaches, and then that big one's come along and sucked it in like a good one. Yeah, so we'll have another look on that line. So that's where we are. I'm going to keep rambling on for a bit because how much footage we got. I know we've got some footage, but I don't know. The tripod cam stopped working for at one point, and I don't know exactly at what point that was it's working again now just the power cable fell out of it all that wind <laughs> right a little try do you have a margin a long margin. I've got a long, two short margins, two long margins. So I'm fishing up to the platform, both sides. That's like sort of the maximum water I'm allowed to fish. But I've put pellets in on all, th all of my sort of short lines except one. And one, one to the left, which I feel like it's my least likely to produce. I just got to try something a bit different. And so I've got three I put a big pot of maggots and like a big like a you know a big pot of maggots. I've got the cupping kit out so it's all it three quarters full. It's hiding right there. But it's gonna go with some silverfish or something, but I figured it's something different, maybe they can't want that maggot today. I've caught a lot of fish on the maggot over and and I've tried the pellet over, I've not really caught on it, so maybe they don't want pellet. And it didn't take long for that to go on, it straight under. Just totally mad guys, totally mad. So I went to my left and had that, had that um, sorry I went to my right, didn't I, on the margin. Had that roach over me, over me pellets. 
them that they've had to be left over in maggots. Had a small roach. Nothing. And I thought, right, so I went back over both of them again, for another five minutes each, nothing. So I've topped, I left the maggot line because I don't really want to just fill it in with maggots because I just feel like that, you know, that, that ship was sailed. I put some more pellets in over the poke line and I've gone across back over again on the maggot. Still no feed. This is the second, this is the second fish in two pots. I had a small, small little one pound pasta and now I've got what looks like a two or three pound carp on. And the, the, the pasty took about a minute to get this, the float didn't even settle. Just took it on the drop and he's had it. Yeah, if you put any, you know, put any feed anywhere in the swim, you can't catch over it, but you just fish without any feed up the far bank. You just wait for one to suck it in and you know, a bite after two minutes, you ain't going to get one, just move spot. That seems to be a trick for the day. Oh yeah, these fish are putting up such a fight. I mean, look my last video only two days ago. I mean, a fish twice the size of that would have waddling in with no effort at all. It's actually more like a four pounder, isn't it? But um, today, a little bit of extra heat in the water. I'm steady on, big lad, you've done that. 